You can play Amazing Grace, you can and we play uh, uh, the song we sang before. And if you, each one you play something different. I just want to see and to show you how hopeful it can be. Don't play together, play something different. Play some, a different song.
when some men of God were really having the real apostolic doctrine and speaking about the name of Jesus, which is the most important thing upon this rock, I will build my church. Starting to change and starting to speak about how to motivate the church. And you've got some people who are so motivated, they're happy for an hour for an hour during the church. And when they come out, they said a miserable day. Just because there is one thing that we have missed and messed up. It's to sanctify ourselves and to become in one agreement, in one thing. Praise us. A tabernacle of the church, an altar, is a place to put the sacrifices. My, 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 my. Whatever you do here has to be a sacrifice. A praise has to be a sacrifice. It is not something that you, a sacrifice is asking for pain. If it's not bleeding, the sacrifice is not happiness. If you don't bleed in you praises, if you don't come out of yourself to praise God, if you so don't detach from your body to praise God, you sacrifice is not admitted. And you become a church member, but not a kingdom member. <laughs> Praise is a sacrifice. Glory to God. It takes sacrifice when you are in pain. And you start to shout hallelujah. Amen. It starts to take sacrifice when people are despising you. And people are crushing you down. And people are walking over you to say hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Some people will say but you are the man. Why are you thanking God when you are despised? And you will say you know hey. Did it with Jesus. Hallelujah. So do you know you feel alone? No, I'm not alone. Because the Lord is on my side. Yes. Oh Lord, have mercy. Yes. You didn't hear me, I said the Lord is on my side. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. People despise you, people crush you. But still the Lord is on your side. Yes. If I pass, if, you, if they pass through the valley of Shaka, they will make a well. They're still praising thee. Regardless of the trouble, regardless of what the people will say, regardless of how the valley is rough and tough, regardless of what you bank manager would say about your finances, regardless about what the prime minister has said about the crisis, regardless of, hey, we will make it well because we're still praising God. Yeah. When you are praising God, you are passing from this world to heaven's side. Amen. I don't know if you ever came into the time of praise when you completely distract yourself and you realize when you open back your eyes to, oh, I'm back in the world. When nothing had mattered, the world can fall around you, but you are praising God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It happened to me to have some, such a headache, feeling bad, and you start to praise God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I just want to praise you. And you start to praise him. 
You start to feel his presence. And when you start to feel his presence, you continue to praise more. Because there is a deep calling for the deep. Oh, hallelujah. 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 There's a deep in heaven's side. And there is a deep who wants to respond. Oh, no, heaven. Hallelujah. And you start to praise God. And doesn't matter about the headache. It's done. It's not there no more. You forget all about that. Have you realized that when you praise God, you forget about your bill? Yes. You forget about the trouble you have. You forget about the wife or the husband who was unfaithful. You forget about the kids who were missing about. Just because you praise. Praises get chance made. And then the priest started to come walk together and when they came at one sound of praise you know you've got so many people they come on the platform and the only thing they want is not to praise God when they say praise the Lord it is praise me But when the preachers are coming into our agreement that we come to praise God, when the congregation and together make the same sound, the sound which comes from the inside, rivers of water will come out of your best. When it starts to come out from your mouth and your only objective is to please God, not to please man. And then you therefore you don't care about your neighbor no more. That's no matter who is nearby you or who is not nearby you. But you just want to pray. You just want to please him. You just want to have a smile from God over your life. You want it to shine over you. Hallelujah. Regardless of what the people will say, glory to God. Regardless what position you will take, how you dress and how you talk has no matter when it comes in place. Blessed come down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to take in Ezra to chapter 3, verse 11. The Bible says that they sang together by course and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord because he is good and for his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. And all the people shouted. With a great shout, and they praise the Lord because of the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. The foundation was laid. Now the congregation had to shout in one voice. We have to praise God. Hallelujah. If we can be one. You will never be one in your body. You can't. But in the spirit. When you take the level of the spirit, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And guess what? When you take the level of the spirit, you start to see how God sees you. Yes. You see people work right. You see them washed in the blood. There's no more time for gossiping. You have nothing to gossip about because you see them as white as snow. They sanctify. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when you are sanctified and you see the people as white as snow, you will be fruitful to take them to the gospel. Oh, glory to God. And to be 
be an example of glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, we, we have said so many times, come to hear the word of God or come to the church and you will have some good time. No, no, that's not the right way. Glory to God. Invite the people to praise God. God is not seeking for preachers. There are too many. There are too many. Some preach the word. So messed up the word. If all the preachers were preaching the world, the whole world would be saved. Amen. There are too many preachers. So God is not seeking for preachers. God is not seeking for bishops. Too many of them too. God is not seeking for apostles. No. He is seeking for worshipers. God seeks worshipers. Hallelujah. In the last days, He is seeking, the Father is seeking for real worshipers who will be worshiping in spirit. God, hallelujah. I don't know how you feel about that. But God is coming for some people to worship. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When we come to church with a heart of worship, glory to God. With all what we have, we want to worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Not only with our voice, but with all our body. Not also with our body, but all we have. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't know if it happened to you, but very often I prepare my offering because I set up a goal of what I want to put. Because I know my finances, God, God knows that too. Glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. 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 And you know, I set up a goal, so I said I take the bank notes and I just know what bank notes I will give. And ever since that, I'm in a time of worship. And then I think like God feels. I'm not asking for the remnant. I'm not asking for what you prepared or what you sanctified for me. I want you to be sanctified. And then I reopened my wallet. It happened to me more than once. I heard Bishop Reed saying that it happened to us more than once. We had put everything we had for to make the trip to go to some churches. And we were left with a bank note of 10, sometimes 5 pounds, 20 if we were well, well blessed. And then when we arrived to the church, for that it. You know, glory to God. I've learned now how to make plays in order that God increases. Amen. Yeah. He can't renew when there when there is some old stops. And we trust in God in that praise and in that worship. Glory to God because it's a worship too. Amen. You know, God is looking for your heart. Glory to God. If you come here and say, oh, you know, I have to pay my tithes. Okay. You know, there are some people who are like that. There are some people, they don't pay their tithes at all. You got some people, they don't want to pay their tithes. They don't want to go see why I'm just paying my tithes. Pastor's always preaching about the tithes. You know why pastor preach about the tithes? Because it's in the Bible, the tithes. Love it. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we believe, that's why we Bible believers. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And you got some people who that said, oh yes, I will pay it, but I don't know how I will do it. Uh, I have to do so let it go. Miserable. That's not sanctified. Yes. This is not sanctified. Amen. Amen. And there are some people who say, hey, praise God, hallelujah. This is time for me to be blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 
I just want to do what God says that I have to do. Glory to God. I want to do what God says I have to do. Hallelujah. I just feel good with that. And then just go and grab it and say, oh, yes. I had a thousand pounds in my wages. I went with a hundred but hey. Hey, Lord, you bless me. I want to bless him all. I will not neglect those of the collection. And then they make a sacrifice nearby. You know, God is not pleasing your tithes. It's an obedience. Hello. God, let me tell you something. God is not pleased when you obey Him. God is pleased when you go over the obedience in order to please it. If I ask, you know, if I ask you for a bottle of water, you can go and take it a bottle of water. I will say to you, thank you. You just did what I asked you to do. But if you come with a bottle of water and a glass nearby, and you put a little bit of paper on top of it, hey, what will I think? You went out of your way to do something. Therefore, you start to please me. When you go out of your way with God, let me repeat that to you. you know. When you come out of your way with God, God is pleased. Amen. Hey. And if God is pleased, what can, what can you expect? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I take another verse quick in Psalm 130 verse 9? I'm telling you this is not the seven thunders spoken in the Bible, but you hear it. <laughs> Glory to God. is to be praised. 
The Lord's name is to be praised. So when you raise up on the morning, hallelujah. When you come out of your bed, hallelujah. When you, when you have your breakfast, hallelujah. When the cattle is messing about, hallelujah, anyway. When glory to God, when, when, when you realize that you don't have no sugar to put in your tea, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. When you realize that the milk has turned off, glory to God, hallelujah. And then you go outside and you realize that your car is not starting, but still, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus, hallelujah. And then you try to start your car and it's on the road and somebody is beeping you and getting on your nerve, but still, oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You arrive at your office or you arrive at your job and they start to get on your nerves and you say, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And some people come to tell you it is not your day. They say, yes, it is my day because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I wish to rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. They say, no, that's not your day. You know, you should not have been waking up this morning. Hey, I wake up every morning uh, with the Lord on my side. And all the day long, He lives in me. Uh, and hallelujah, greater is He that is in me than He is in the world. Uh, I have the Lord on my side. I want to praise Him. When I wake up on the morning, I know this is the day that the Lord has made. Not for you, but for me. Uh, I know this is the day that I have to praise Him. I have to sanctify myself. I know that my blessing is on its way. What is the trouble at the present time? It's just because the devil is trying to stop my blessing to come. But anyway, poor devil, the devil has no power because God chose me and God called me blessed. And if God called you blessed, oh, if God called you blessed, there is no devil, there is no spirit, there is no trouble on the way who can stop the blessing. Just because you praise him from the raising of the sun to the going down of the things. Hallelujah. Without no seeds, I will praise him until my blessing come forward. I will praise him until the promise be manifest on me. I don't know how many of you are here willing to praise God, but the word of God and the church of God, the, the, the tabernacle of God, the, 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 the place of the sacrifice, the altar is built on praise. The altar is... It is not built on the taxes, it's not built on the tithes, it is not built on, on it is not built on nothing else and praise. This is the place of praise and worship. Oh. Hallelujah. I don't know why some people call their get church a place of worship. There is anything they accept worship, but in the real church of the living God, there are some people who are raising up their voice. There are some people who realize that they are real worshipers, that they have to worship in spirit and truth. I don't know if I'm talking to someone here, but just give him some praise. Is high above all nations. 
He doesn't look on your skin. Um, he doesn't look on who you are. He doesn't look on where you were born. He doesn't lie. He doesn't look even where you have studied. He doesn't look how you grew up. He looks how you are. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> Church of the living God. What will make the difference? It's not the preaching. You can have the best preachers in the world passing on this platform. It will never change the community. It won't. You can try to help and to open all the charities of the world from this church. It will never reach the community. What reaches the covenant is praises and worship. Amen. Amen. So Bishop, how can you say that very easy? In the book of Acts, it said that God was adding on the daily basis the soul who were needing to be saved to his church. It's not by you preaching, it's by God's calling. Where God is pleased, God's opened the doors. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you make some noise to the Lord, glory to God, I'm telling you something. This church, hallelujah, I prophesy that the first time I can hear is too small. I wish, I wish you could say hallelujah. hallelujah. For who is the Lord our God who dwell on high? Who humbled himself to behold the things that are in the heaven and in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust. I don't know how many of you feel in the dust today. Many people don't look at you. Many people don't, don't take notice of you. Maybe because you don't dress in a standard that they would dress. Maybe because you, your bank account is not big enough. Maybe because you don't have any big American fridge in your house, which gives you the ice cube at the same time when you did your coffee. <laughs> Maybe it's because your car, your car is not worth the bicycle. And people don't look at you. Bible almost said he raised up the poor from the dust, from the despised place. You know when you are dusting a place, you're just dusting a place and you know, glory to God. I don't know how many of you dust their house sometimes, glory to God, hallelujah. When you dust, you don't go back after from the dust and to pick something out. But God does. Remember, man is dust, but he raised some dust out of the dust. Mm. He raised some dust out of the dust. God knows exactly the dust of values and the dust which have no values. But the dust which have values is the dust which is praising God. Amen. You better make noise. You better pray. <laughs> and lift the needy out of the half here, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. I don't know how many of you have had the occasion to sit down with my king or princes or prime ministers or ministers. My wife and I, we did several times. We had some MPs, presidents, glory to God. We, better than that, we have, a, we have a man who 
was with us not long ago, and he he was a Christian. I didn't believe in his vision. I didn't. But he says to me that he would be president of uh, Angola. He is. Glory to God. And guess what? You know, some time ago, some days ago, I think I was with my son on that day passing through Brussels. And guess what? I saw him there working with his staff and his, uh, his big suitcase, you know, his gloves, you know, and the staff nearby. And I said, hey, that's him. I stopped, I shot his name. You know, I knew him as a brother. I didn't knew that he was president now. The people looked at me and he came right to oh, my bishop. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. We, we, we have been seated with, with wife of president, president himself, pastors, kings, princes. We are dust. We are dust. But God takes the poor out of the dust. Doesn't mean that he will be that rich. No, he will be different than the others. Hallelujah. I'm not rich. But God supplies all my needs. Hallelujah. Are you here? Yes. I don't need to have a million on my bank account. I don't. If I have a million on my bank account, I will be worried. Because I don't know if the bank will stand tomorrow. Glory to God. <laughs> Perhaps that goes in down. Yes. So I don't want to be worried about a million pounds. I left that to some American preachers. Glory to God. They can be worried as much as they want. Glory to God. I don't want to be worried. But I know that my bag is in hell. Amen. He shall supply all my needs. Sing with me. He shall supply all my needs. What I need. What I need. For some of you, it's even to put five pounds on your phone. That can be a need. Yes. Hallelujah. Like you will not walk a pastor no more just ringing here and searching for your phone. And <laughs> before that he answered like that, you know that he will go with this money. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know what I do when it's like that? When people just bring me, and if they do that more than two eyes, I don't answer their form no more. I don't. Glory to God. Because my God provides for my needs, and you God provides for your needs. So what is your God? Hallelujah. My God is the one who takes me out of the dust. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Say it with me. My God, take, my, my God took me out of the, the, the dust. My God took me out of the dust. Say it again. My God, my God took me out, took me out of the dust. Of the dust. Hallelujah. Amen. And now, look at that. Look at that. I just want to finish with that. Verse 9. He grants the barren woman a hope. Like a joyful mother of Shishra. You know, the woman represents also the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you praise God, He is opening the spiritual womb. Hallelujah. When you open up to God and start to praise God, he is impregnated you, glory to God, to give you some children. Hallelujah. But that has to
to come with an intimate relationship. Now you got two types of intimate relationship. You have the intimate relationship when you are on your own with God. And you are there inside of your closet and you start to praise it for yourself. You start to have an encounter one to one with God. But remember to that Father let them be one as we are one. So when we come as one body, glory to God, and you start to have one voice as the priest with one sound of trumpets. When you start to have one voice and you start to shout to God and to praise God in one voice, glory to Jesus. At that time, God is hearing it and he is opening the wounds in order to give birth to some other people to go in. Glory to God. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. He is opening the womb of the unfruitful woman. Now it worked physically. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, can I just say something with my own words? It may be sound rude to you, but don't praise God after you went with your husband. Praise God before it, after it, and you will have shouts. Yeah. Glory to God. Children. Amen. Do you understand what I mean? Some, you know, glory to God. Some of us, we don't praise God. So excited before, we don't want to praise God. And after, we too tired. And we wonder why we got no kids. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I first came on the platform, I felt the presence of God in a mighty way. In a mighty way. Do you see how difficult it was for me to start to minister? When I can't minister, I let God minister. And I want to finish this service with God ministering to us. I want the cloud to enter into this place. I want the cloud to be over this place. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want the cloud to go over this place. Glory to Jesus. Amen. 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 I want the cloud to surrender this place. Amen. Amen. The people from my side can see something. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And in the midst of the cloud, Hallelujah. Amen. The glory of the Lord seated there. Hallelujah. Amen. But it will not happen. Him. I want you to praise him as never before. I want you to lift up your voice as never before. Listen to me, church of God. Listen to me, church of the living God. I want you to praise him right now. Give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on, church of the living God. Give him some praise. Give him some praise.
When a person is there or, or can't speak, when you got some crippled people, some blind people, there we talk miracles. Because you know, headache, paracetamol, that's the same. Amen. With a headache, you have two choices the name of Jesus or the name of paracetamol. Love and God. But when you're there, when you're blind, and no other way is that Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I remember some years ago in Guadalupe. And we had a crusade in Bay Started with a small number, but at the end there were people on the parking on the outside of the church because there were so many miracles. People were traveling all the way from Paris to go to Guadalupe on the airplane to come. The man was healed from cancer. He came all the way from Paris to Guadalupe. Nine hours in the airplane and they received this healing. And they came with that boy. That boy was 30 years old, just two minutes. Was 30 years old. And 30 was 12 or 30. 12 years old. He came and the parents came and then the daddy was healed from something the previous day. Or the grandma. The, the grandmother who was on the wheelchair to God, the wheelchair to drive, something like that. And, you know, glory to God, the son came, he couldn't speak, never spoke in his life, he couldn't hear, prayed for him, to give him one arm, I said, do you want to hear? And uh, the mother of people, the daddy, was translating to him. I prayed for him to give him my heart, to give him my heart. Sat down with him at the moment, to give him my name, prayed for him. And I said, say hallelujah. When I said say hallelujah, he said, oh, let's talk, let's see. I said, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, that's not what I said in Jesus' name. Right now, say hallelujah. And the song said, hallelujah. The whole congregation went into praise. The day after the parents came to, to us and said, look, you know, can you pray? He didn't stop to talk all the way down in the car, all in the night. He, you know, glory to God, he had 12 years to get back. Glory to God, hallelujah. And the same thing in Belgium. You know, God never changed. Jesus never changes. Wherever Jesus passes, miracles happen. Hallelujah. He opened the blind eyes, opened the deaf ears, loosed the tongues of those who don't speak, repaired the broken bones, repaired the muscles. He is God. He is God. And today He is there for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you can pray with me or not. It's up to you. But I'm telling you something. Hallelujah. Our faith. Love to God. In Jesus' name right now. In Jesus' name right now, Jesus, I'm proclaiming a healing in that year. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, you are the same today as you were yesterday, and you will be the same forever. Though God, as I judge you and find me, I know this is You are has redeemed her by your stripes. She was healed. In Jesus' name, I command the ear to all my friends and to hear in Jesus' name. I want you to put you in the other room. Now I want you to turn. I want you to show with 
your finger, the number I will tell you. Three. Nothing is happening. Nothing yet happened. You did, uh, did you hear it well? Sorry. Did you hear it well? Yeah. Is it perfect? Thank you.